Jeremiah chapter number 2, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in a wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, I don't know why it still amazes me after all these years, but, Lord, it still amazes me when, Lord, you orchestrate and put things together. And, Lord, we're certainly thankful that, God, you're in control and that, Lord, you know exactly what we stand in need of. Now, Father, we thank you for these good folks coming out on this Wednesday night when they're threatening bad weather and all kinds of things. And Lord, we're thankful they have found themselves in the house of God tonight. And Lord, you know what we all stand in need of. You know the number of the hairs on our head. You know the thoughts and intents of our hearts. You know our down-sitting, our uprising. You know everything about us, Father, and you know what we stand in need of tonight. Lord, even in this wonderful book of Jeremiah in chapter 17, we know that you said that the heart of man is deceitful, that no man knoweth the heart. Lord, we don't even know what's in our own heart, but God, you do. And God, I pray that tonight you would help these folks. uh, No telling what they're facing, no telling what they have faced. Uh, Lord, I pray tonight that the sweet Holy Ghost of God would apply a balm of Gilead, which we find in chapter number 8 of Jeremiah. Lord, we'd find that balm of Gilead applied to folks' hearts and lives. Uh, Maybe tonight somebody needs a special touch from heaven. Maybe tonight somebody is seeking answers and you said seek and ye shall find. Uh, And I pray they'd find the answers what they need from the word of God tonight. Uh, Father, maybe somebody's amongst us tonight uh, who's a stranger to the grace of God. Uh, Lord, they may know about you, but they may not know you. And I pray that would change tonight. I pray that, Lord, they'd leave out and be able to sing that song Brother Clint sang. Uh, Things are different now. Why? Because they met the Lord. Uh, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd be with those that are sick. Uh, I pray for those that are providentially hindered. Uh, I pray for those, uh, Lord, that desire to be here but couldn't be here tonight. Uh, Lord, you'd help them. Uh, Help those that are watching via live stream. Uh, But, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Uh, I pray you'd sit down amongst us. uh, And I pray your perfect will would not only be manifested, uh, but would be accomplished in the hearts of everyone in attendance. Uh, Bless now, glorify your namesake, uh, and Father will not fail to bless you for it, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Uh, amen. I, I want you to notice in these two verses, uh, first of all, Jeremiah receives the mindset of the Lord. Uh, look again in verse number one. It says, Moreover, uh, the word of the Lord came to me. Uh, Can I say in chapter number one, uh, uh, God uh, approaches Jeremiah and lets him know some things. Uh, He lets Jeremiah know that before Jeremiah was formed in the belly, uh, that God had uh, ordained him to be a prophet and had separated him from his mother's womb. Uh, uh, Can I say, uh, that's in verse number five, that's how come we know abortion's wrong. Uh, uh, Before we're even formed in the belly, God knows us, uh, and life begins at conception. Uh, In chapter number one, we find that God calls Jeremiah, uh, and God tells Jeremiah he's going to a stiff-necked people, uh, an uncircumcised heart of people, uh, a people who would not receive the message of God. Uh, But he said, be not dismayed at their faces. Uh, He said, I am with thee. Uh, And what a blessing and a comfort to know uh, that God is with us. Uh, And God begins to work in Jeremiah's heart uh, and begins to speak to Jeremiah's heart. Uh, And chapter 2 starts uh, with moreover uh, or in continuance. Uh, what is uh, going to transpire because of chapter number one Uh, and we find that Jeremiah receives the mindset of the Lord uh, uh, the word of the Lord uh, 
came to Jeremiah. And can I say, uh, every man of God that stands uh, uh, behind the sacred desk of God uh, and opens the bread of life, the word of God, uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, he is utterly uh, uh, useless uh, unless he's heard from heaven ahead of time, uh, unless he's got the mind of God ahead of time, uh, unless he can stand uh, and proclaim what God has already put in his heart. Uh, we find that in verse number 1, uh, Jeremiah receives the mindset of the Lord. Uh, notice, if you will, uh, in verse number 2, he gets the marching orders from the Lord. Uh, verse number 2 uh, opens with the word go. Didn't say procrastinate. Didn't say wait for a little while. Didn't say stop. Told him to go. And can I say... Uh, the last thing the Lord Jesus Christ uh, said unto his disciples before he ascended back into heaven, uh, he said, go and preach the word of God to every creature. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, the church's marching orders were given some 2,000 years ago by the Lord. Uh, where to go? Uh, uh, how can they hear about the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, if we keep it bottled up? Where to go? Where to tell them? Uh, where to let folks know that Jesus Jesus saves. Uh, Jesus loves them. Uh, Jesus is the answer. Uh, can I say? He got the mindset of the Lord. He got marching orders from the Lord. Uh, but also notice, if you will, he receives the message to deliver from the Lord. Look again at verse number 2. He says, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Here's the message. Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals when thou wentest after me in a wilderness in a land that was not sown. Notice the message is a message of fondness. He said, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. God is speaking now to Jerusalem, talking about when they first became a nation. When he called them out of Egypt and he led them out by Moses uh, and they after he said, I remember the fondness of thy youth or the kindness of thy youth. It's a fond message. It's not only a message of fondness, but it's a message of fellowship. Look what he says. I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals when thou wentest after me in a wilderness in a land that was not sown. He says, the love of thine espousals. He's talking about that sweet fellowship. That fellowship when they first were united. Can I say Israel is always a picture of the wife of Jehovah. He said, I remember when we first got hitched. You see, Brother Seth, Miss Bailey, y'all getting ready to get hitched. And your first year, first year and a half, you know, that's your honeymoon time, huh? Well, look on down the road at your dad there, Seth. Uh, that love of his espousal is in the back mirror, you know, rear view mirror, huh? He's enduring to the ends what he's doing now, brother, huh? Uh, now, we laugh at that. But when we first fell in love, oh, remember the love letters? Remember when we used to get flowers for her? Remember when we couldn't wait to go see her? Remember all that? Now she wants to go shopping. We think that's a problem. Uh, you want to go shopping again? When you first uh, fell in love with her, you'd have took her to every mall in Cincinnati. Uh, what happens? Well, time happens. You become deeper and deeper connected but if you're not careful you'll grow apart if you're not careful you won't keep that love kindled oh you love them you just don't express it like you used to the Lord is talking about when they had that sweet fellowship it's a message of fellowship message of fondness it's a message of following he said when you went after me in a wilderness that was not sown Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness not knowing when they'd get to go to the promised land. And many of them, 
and didn't want to follow the Lord and to follow, follow the Lord's man. But he remember when they first started out, when he's feeding them man and feeding them quail. He remember when they followed him. But can I say that the Lord's message through Jeremiah, it really concludes with forsakenness. Look at verse number 12. He says, Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and hor be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. His message concludes that it's a message of forsakenness. They had forsaken him. The Lord is trying to stir in them a remembrance when they were fond of him. But he shows them where they are. They have forsaken him. They had not only forsaken him, they had hewed, he was the fountain of living waters. They had hewed them out cisterns that could hold no water. Uh, can I say in this day and age, uh, there are people that have known the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, but they have turned their backs on him. Uh, they have hewed them out something else uh, that has drawn their attention, that has drawn their affection, uh, something else that can ha hold no water when it comes to eternity. Uh, that is getting all their time and attention, uh, and the Lord is not even in uh, their memory. Can I say there's a lot of people their love has been shifted and they have forsaken the Lord. It's gotten real quiet in here tonight. I'm not preaching on any of that. I'm interested in verse number 2 where he says this. I remember thee. That exact phrase is mentioned five times in your King James Bible. I remember thee. Can I say where we find in Jeremiah chapter 2 where it is mentioned, uh, it is the last time you find that phrase in your Bible, and it is the only time that is spoken from God to man. Every other time it is either man remembering the Lord or a prophet telling man to remember the Lord. But here we find where it's the only time where God says it to man. He says, I remember thee. And with God's help, I want to preach that thought tonight. I want to preach on, I remember thee. I want to preach on it as God is saying it to his people and God speaking to his people even today. Aren't you glad we got a God that remembers us? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, can I say that he remembers our conversion? Yeah. Oh, what a blessed night, the night I got born again. Yeah. What a blessed night some 50 years ago uh, when sitting in a church service like this uh, about three quarters way back on this uh, 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 right hand side of the sanctuary uh, uh, that night uh, uh, all of a sudden uh, it was no longer the preacher who had me my granddaddy doing some preaching. Uh, uh, somebody started speaking to my heart uh, and what I did not know then but what I know now it was the Lord through the Holy Spirit uh, began to speak uh, and let let me know I was a sinner. Uh, I was the one that needed to be saved. Uh, that night during the altar call, uh, I made my way to the front, uh, knelt at an old-fashioned altar. Uh, I met the Lord there. Uh, he saved me. Uh, he changed my life. Uh, he wrote my name down in heaven. Uh, what a blessing. Made me a citizen uh, of the glory world. Uh, what a blessing to know. Uh, he washed all my sins away. Uh, robe me in his righteousness uh, hey seal me with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, I didn't know any of that the night I got saved uh, all I knew is I once was lost uh, but I now was found uh, what I knew uh, hey uh, something had happened to me that I did not ex expect uh, nor could explain uh, all I knew is the weight of the world was lifted off of me uh, and all I could do was tell the Lord thank you uh, thank you uh, thank you uh, what a blessing to know uh, what the Lord did that night for me uh, but I've got news for you if I ever get Alzheimer's because most days I got part timers now but if I ever get Alzheimer's brother Adrian 
And I can't recall that night when Jesus saved me. Uh, I've got good news. Uh, he remembers my conversion. Uh, he remembers the night we say he saved us. Uh, hey, uh, hey, we're engraved in the palm of his hand. Uh, he put me in his hand, the Savior did. Uh, and the Savior's hand's in the Father's hand. Uh, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Uh, and even if I can't remember, uh, he remembers. Uh, hey, what a blessed night uh, that the Lord remembers when he wrote my name down in the land book of life uh, and he has no eraser what a blessing uh, I don't know he remembers my conversion uh, if you're here tonight and you can remember half of anything in your life and you can't remember a time and a place when you met the Lord you may not have met him I find it very hard to believe that you can pass from death unto life and it doesn't make such a profound effect on you that you can't remember it. Well, I'm here to tell you, you get to a place where your mind don't work like it once did. I'm glad our mind's not what saves us. I'm glad it's faith in God's Word and being washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I'm glad the Lord... Uh, remembers our conversion can I say uh, the Lord remembers our compassion for him uh, just like uh, he remembered the kindness of their youth uh, you remember when you first got saved and all you knew was the love of God uh, hey uh, when I first got saved I couldn't have told you what the minor prophets were or where to find them in the Bible uh, but I can tell you this uh, I, I knew uh, something had happened to me uh, hey I used to uh, have a problem I had a drug problem uh, and I got drugged to church every Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday night Saturday night uh, 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 that's what uh, uh, we just did. Uh, my mama drugged me to church. Uh, I, I had a drug problem. Uh, I didn't uh, particularly care to go. That's just what we did. Uh, there were some songs that were sung I didn't particularly care to like, but they sang them anyway. Uh, uh, sometimes it seemed like the services went too long. Uh, and heaven help us uh, if that one fella preached who my Aunt Lynn knows. Uh, uh, Lord have mercy. It seemed like we was there all night long. Uh, and he didn't say anything. Uh, uh, but can I say tonight, uh, after I got saved, uh, I didn't get drugged to church anymore. Uh, I love getting to go to church. Uh, I love hearing them old hymns sung. Uh, I loved hearing preaching. Uh, I loved revival time. Uh, I loved homecoming time. Uh, I loved everything about the house of God. Uh, why? Because Jesus loved the church uh, and gave himself for it. Uh, and when I got saved, Jesus moved down inside of me uh, through the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, and hey, the things he loves, I had a love for. Hallelujah. People I didn't even know, I found out I loved them. Because when I first got saved, all I knew was love. That's all I knew. I loved everything. It was a whole new world. Can I say the Lord remembers when we loved Him like that? Uh, mm. They picked on Brother Ed Pierce. I ain't picked on him a long time. Brother Ed, I love you. You're a very distinguished fellow. I'm so glad God sent you to our church. I, I love you. Remember how you sit next to her and had your arm around her? Yeah, I know. So I'm back here. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Phil's got his arm around her now. You better watch Phil. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, God remembers when we used to want to put our arm around him. Now you can put a semi between you two. What's the problem here? Uh, uh. Uh, we need to do a little work. I think we need to have a marriage seminary for old folks. Uh, uh. See, there was a time. I know that was funny, wasn't it, babe? <laughs> there was a time when, oh, you couldn't get enough of God. Right. But then all of a sudden the devil show up. And he starts just hammering on you. And the more you grow in Christ, the more your faith increases, the more your knowledge increases, the more he fights you. Right. 
and he wants to do everything he can to rob you of your joy for the Lord uh, because when you're excited about the Lord, you're infectious and you that will rub off on other people. Other people want to know about the Lord too. But if you get to where you act like Brother Ed, nobody wants what he got, he's got, huh? No, what happens over time, we get to face that old sorry good devil and this old world and we face things and we get hammered on, hammered on, hammered on, we get hard. That's why revival meetings are good. Sure. Revival meetings will strip all that hardness away and get us back tender in what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. But can I say, the Lord remembers how thrilled we were when we first got saved. And I, can I help you something? Brother Ray, let me help you something. You look like you need some help. Let me help you. In heaven, there is no time. God's the same yesterday, today, forever. With him, a thousand years as a day, a day is a thousand years. There is no time in heaven. So he remembers that joy just as if it's today. Huh? Now we, we get all the guilt and all the shame and all the failures and all, we live with all that. Boy, I blew it this day and I didn't, didn't do this this day and I didn't, we deal with all that. But Jim, brother, God, God's just looking at you just like that, that love's fresh and everything, just like it was today. That ought to help some of you. Uh, he remembers our compassion for him. He remembers our conversion. Can I say this about the Lord? He said, I remember thee. He remembers our cares. He said, casting all your cares on him, for he careth for you. Did you ever feel like heaven's shut up? Heaven's become brass. God doesn't hear your prayers. Uh, you ever feel like uh, God's never going to answer your prayers? You ever feel like God may have forgotten you? Uh, have you ever been in church uh, and people get to testify about the goodness of God and how God's answered their prayer and how God's done this and God's done that and you're sitting there thinking, I've been praying, I've been seeking God and God hadn't done nothing. He hadn't spoke to me. Uh, he hadn't uh, uh, given me time of day and he's blessed everybody. God must have forgotten me. Uh, I've got good news here has never forgotten you friend uh, and he remembers your cares uh, I'm reminded Daniel prayed for 21 days uh, Daniel never prayed for more than 21 minutes and God hadn't answered him uh, 21 days uh, uh, but hey the archangel busted through and said God heard you the first time you prayed uh, uh, but uh, hey the wicked one withstood me but hey uh, uh, here's the answer and can I tell you neighbor uh, the answer on its way. Uh, God has not forgotten you. Uh, I remind you the book of Job. Uh, uh, God did not speak through Job uh, through all of his temptations, uh, through all of his trial, uh, through all of his tragedy. Uh, God did not speak to Job. Uh, hey, but by the end of the chapter when God did speak to him, uh, God reminded him God was there all the time uh, and he blessed him twice as much as what Job had in the beginning and what all he lost. Uh, I'm telling you, God remembers our cares, friends. Amen. There's nothing that can come to you that don't go through his hand. God remembers our cares. Can I say this tonight? He remembers our calls. Every time you prayed, God remembers it. Matter of fact, God records it. The Bible said in Revelation 5, 8, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps, and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. God keeps a record and keeps every prayer you pray, friend. He remembers our calls. Amen. Can I say tonight, I don't remember everybody I've ever talked to, and I certainly don't remember every time I've talked to God, but He does. Yes, he does. He remembers our calls. He remembers our cares. Can I say this? Uh, he remembers our cries. Every tear you've ever shed, God's got a record of it. The Bible says in Psalms 56, 8, Thou tellest my wanderings, 
Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Uh, God's got a tear bottle and he's got a record uh, of every tear you've shed. Uh, he's by them of a broken heart and save us such of a contrite spirit. Uh, uh, can I say tonight, uh, uh, God remembers every tear you've ever shed. Uh, uh, Dottie Rambo wrote that old song, Tears are language that God understands. Uh, and friend, he does. Uh, hey, uh, God remembers remembers those tears friend uh, can I say this God remembers when we've been crippled can I say he he remembers when we've been crippled by sin he remembers when we've been crippled by snares he remembers when we've been crippled by being shot at. You ever been hurt? God remembers. He remembers. When you got crippled. But aren't you glad when you got crippled by sin and you finally confessed it and, and got it right with God that God doesn't remember that sin no more? There are times you are tempted by the devil and them very snares will cripple you. God remembers that. And he remembers when somebody cuts you, when they hurt you. God remembers. Uh, well, Brother Ron, if God remembers it, why do I need to keep wrestling with him? Why don't I just give it to him? That's a lot of our problem. We want to hang on when we got crippled. Why don't you bring it to God and let Him uncripple you? Amen. He who angers you controls you. Uh, why, be, why be bitter when you can be better? Every one of us got a reason to be mad at something. Uh, but I don't choose to live that way. I'd rather get victory over it. Can I say He remembers thee? Can I say God remembers us even when we're contrary to Him? You ever been contrary to God? I'm the only one that's ever been contrary to God. Uh, did you ever read the book of Jonah? God said, Jonah, I want you to go down there and preach to Nineveh. He said, okay, Lord, and then he gets in a ship going to Tarshish. You look on a map, Tarshish is in the direct opposite direction of Nineveh. He was contrary to God. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you I'm glad God never made a big fish swallow me up and I felt like I was in the belly of hell, hell for three days before I got right with God but there, are, there have been times I've been, I've, been, I've been in a mess I'm glad God is long suffering God he remembers when we were contrary when we were frigid and cold you ever been cold and indifferent on God some of you look a little frigid tonight got a little ice cubes in, in your shorts huh uh God remembers when we've been frigid. Remembers when we've been froward and proud. Got contrary to him. He remembers when we've been faithless. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, I got an interesting thing in the mail today. Did you ever get, ever get anything interesting in the mail? Me and Phil. We're on the interesting junk mail thing. No, this wasn't junk mail. I had, a, I had an email from my insurance company the other night uh, said that most house fires are caused by electrical fires. And they said if I would agree to it, they'd send me this little device that I could plug in and, and you know, line it up with my phone and it let me know if, if all the electrical current's right in my house and with my appliances and everything. And if there's ever a problem, it, they can solve it, hopefully, before there's an electrical fire. So I got that thing in the mail today. Looked like one of them plug in makes your house smell better, but it didn't make my house smell better, but I plugged it in. And lined it up with my phone. It's an interesting thing. I pulled up the app. I showed Miss Ness. I said, look at this thing. She said, are they tracking us now? I said, well, I don't know. They're tracking my house. 
They had shown all the current going through all the rooms and showed that I had a two-story house, showed all kinds of stuff. And it said it takes seven days for it to fully be in function, but it was an interesting thing. What can I say? God knows when we're plugged in and when we're not. On that thing was a, a voltage meter, Brother Ray, and it shows where your house current's supposed to be at. Thankfully, mine was right there in the middle. But see, God's got a, a faith meter. I wonder where our faith is. Hmm? Huh? See, God remembers when we're contrary to Him. Amen. Huh? He said, I remember thee. God remembers us when we're confounded, overwhelmed. You ever been overwhelmed? Right. Miss Crystal was her days in the hospital and just felt overwhelmed. Friend, you ever felt overwhelmed with life? Amen. Overwhelmed with the job, overwhelmed with homework? No. You don't have any homework? It's because you don't do your first work, let alone your homework. <laughs> All your work's homework. You're homeschooled. Don't, don't tell me you don't have no homework. Huh? Huh? Let me go talk to your parents. Man, I'm getting my steps in tonight. You ever felt overwhelmed? They felt overwhelmed with having to deal with life, having to deal with his messy room. Yeah, that's bad, isn't it? Yeah. So he does have some homework tonight. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No. Get overwhelmed. But can I say, in the midst of being overwhelmed, even to the point of almost going into a panic attack, God's remembering you. He cares about you. He's wanting to help you. He's wanting to help you tonight. If you're overwhelmed, you're in the right place. The Lord can overwhelm you with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. He can help you tonight. He's the bishop and helper of our soul. Then I thought about this. Believe it or not, Miss Marcy, this is point number nine. I never preach nine points. Usually it's 12. So anyway. Now tell me God wasn't in all this. You know what my ninth point was? He remembers us when we're clutching on for dear life. And then you got up and sang that song tonight. If we just got one thread of hope, just hang on. But he remembers us when we're clutching on for dear life. You feel like it's all you can do. Put one foot in front of the other. That's when the Lord will come by and bear us up. Wings as of eagles. And helps us because he remembers us. When we're overwhelmed, when we're contrary, when life happens, God remembers us. And He's a present help in time of need. And can I say that in His mercy, He's mindful of us. And He misses us when we're not at, the, you know, when, he, when we don't put Him at the forefront of our lives. And God still, in His mercy, speaks to us. He tries to help us. He tries to bless us. He tries to draw us. He tries to comfort us. The real question tonight is not, does God remember us? The real question is, how much do we really remember Him? He ought to get all of our attention, but He doesn't. He ought to get all of our praise, but he doesn't. He ought to get all of our faith, but he doesn't. 
Yet in his mercy, he still cares. It'll be a great day in our lives when we quit looking at us and start looking to him. Everything in human philosophy and everything that is taught in our humanistic schools is taught that you are to look at you and that you can control you and that you are the only one that's important. And everything that is taught in humanism is taught for selfishness. Do you know the essence of sin is selfishness? Why in the world do you think that everything about this world is all geared toward looking at yourself? Because who do you think the God of this world is? Satan. And he doesn't want you looking at where you can get some help. And that's looking beyond you. He doesn't want you looking to the Lord. He wants you to look at you. Uh, things today, they make up stuff and call it diseases, call it issues that would be no issue if we'd learned to look to Jesus. Hmm? Amen. Brother Clint, you're not quite as old as me, but you're getting there. When you was in school, did they have a bully problem, policy? No. We, we knew how to take care of bully policy. Huh? We had our own bully policy. We turned out okay. You know, I'm not sucking on my thumb in a rubber room somewhere wanting to go shoot up somebody or jump off a bridge or anything. I mean, it, it, today's society can't handle life because they've been taught to look at themselves. And when they start looking at themselves, all they see is failure. If they ever get to looking at Christ, they'd find life and life more abundantly. They'd find hope. They'd find peace. They'd find strength in the midst of their storms. They'd find a present help in time of need. They'd find a friend that sticks closer than a brother. They'd find somebody they can always talk to. Why in the world do I need a psychic hotline uh, or I need a psychiatric hotline when I've got a direct line to the God of glory, huh? Mm. But yet a lot of people face a lot of things because they've taught that the whole world evolves around them. And can I help you with something? The whole world was created to bring glory to God. Right. And until we learn to do that, our life will be a mess. He remembers us. How much do we really remember Him? And tonight, you may be really facing some struggles and some problems and some issues. I don't mean to make light of that. But I can tell you where you can find help. His name is Jesus. If you've never been saved, he'll save you. If you've been saved and you have problems, he's the great physician. He knows how to help you. And can I say, it's not about always the physical help. You get the inward help you need and the physical help, it'll, it'll take care of itself. How does she face what she faced? Have you talked to her? She has the greatest attitude in the world. I know people that face things not even a tenth of what she's faced, and all they do is cry and, cr and complain and all that. She's got a great attitude. You know why? Because somebody's done something inside of her, and his name's Jesus. Huh? Right. Doesn't mean her body doesn't hurt. She's back there freezing to death tonight. It doesn't mean she told me last night at the fair she can't taste anything. It's, hey, it's not been a cakewalk, but she knows the Lord. The Lord's helped her. Huh? How's Brother Ed done this for last? Do you realize how he has missed very little church considering he's had two complete knee whatever they did in, and he's had all these procedures and all this. He's still driving himself. He's hard-headed hillbilly. He's what he is, but he's here. Why? Because he loves the Lord. Right. Don't mean he doesn't, doesn't feel great. Don't mean he doesn't have problems. There's other people in here that's, got a, that's had emotional problems, has strength problems, has 
physical problems, has all kinds of problems, you know, financial problems, marital problems, all kinds of problems. Where do they find their help? His name is Jesus. And he's no respecter of persons. He loves everybody the same. And he'll help everybody the same. Child of God, never let the devil make you think that God don't care. He remembers you. Go back to this verse if you have to. I remember thee. He remembers thee. Go over to chapter 31. You'll find out he's loved you with an everlasting love. Uh-uh. There's never been a time he hasn't loved you. And he loves you tonight. And he wants to help you. My dear friend, take solace in the fact he remembers us. And then take courage that he remembers us. And then take a step farther and start remembering him. And see if your relationship doesn't grow deeper and deeper and deeper. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and pray. Maybe you need to thank the Lord that he remembers you. He remembered us in our lowest state. Maybe you need to come thank him. Maybe you need to come tonight and ask for help. The altar's for. Why don't you come and ask for some help tonight? The Lord will help you. Maybe tonight you just need to come and bless his name. Just tell him, Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Maybe tonight he spoke with you, to you about something specific. Maybe you need to just come and talk to the Lord. That old songwriter said it best. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Whatever your need is, Jesus will help you tonight. So let's all stand. So we're already comes. Brother Clint's picking out a song. Why does us pray? Father, we bless you. We're thankful, Lord, for your kindness. Thankful for your tender mercy and your long suffering. Lord, we're thankful that you remember us even when we don't deserve it. And God, we're thankful we're never out of your sight. Now, Father, bless your people tonight. Help them tonight. And God, we certainly pray that Whatever they may be struggling with, they'll find strength in the Lord to overcome it. And then, Father, we do pray, if there be any amongst us who doesn't know you, that, Lord, they'll come put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. Bless now, speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.